Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Michelle and I work here at the Norton Simon Museum. Today, we will be making floral bookmarks inspired by Rachel Roish's still life painting, Nosegay on a Marble Plinth. A still life is a work of art that depicts objects like fruit and flowers rather than people and landscapes. Today, for this project, we will be focusing on flowers. First, let's take a moment to look at Rachel Roish's painting. There are a lot of details. What do you notice? Let's begin at the upper right corner. Do you see the cricket sitting on the budding snapdragon flowers? Just beneath these flowers, we see an insect with a similar name, a dragonfly. Below the dragonfly is a butterfly with orange wings that match the orange in the vibrant orange Gerbera flower next to it. Just beneath the Gerbera are two large roses in full bloom, one white and one pink. Do you notice the hint of brown in their petals? This detail tells us that these flowers are older and will soon wilt. If you look closer, you'll see a little bee in between the two roses. Bees gather nectar from flowers to turn into honey. In doing so, they also pollinate flowers, allowing more flowers to grow. This bee has an important job. Jutting out at a diagonal below the bee is a pointy green leaf. The leaf is also showing its age. Do you see the small holes and brown spots across its surface? In this painting, artist Rachel Roish has depicted many steps in the beautiful life cycle of plants. Artist Rachel Roish was born in Amsterdam in 1664, more than 350 years ago. When she was growing up, she learned a lot about flowers and insects and science while assisting her scientist father with his collection of plants and insects. At the time, it was unusual for women to become professional painters, but Roish became a very accomplished painter of still lifes. Her work often featured flowers and insects arranged at a diagonal and dramatically lit to make them more interesting. Roish was known as one of the most successful painters of her time, and she continued to paint all the way into her 80s, creating more than 250 paintings in her lifetime. Now it is time to make our own artwork. We will follow Roish's interest in nature and work with real flowers to create our own floral composition on a bookmark. You will need the following materials. A bookmark sized piece of cardstock paper, about 2.5 by 6 inches, a pencil, coloring supplies, a glue stick, self laminating sheets or clear packing tape, a piece of ribbon, a hole puncher, and a pair of scissors. You will also need pressed flowers or fresh flowers if you would like to press them yourself. To press flowers, you will need a book, I used a notebook, some absorbent paper like coffee filters, and a heavy object like a stack of books. Place your flowers in between two sheets of the absorbent paper. Then, put your flowers and absorbent papers in between the pages of a book. Finally, put a heavy object like a stack of heavy books on top of the closed book with the flower in its pages. You can press your flowers for as long as you like. My flowers look like this after only five days of being pressed. Looking at your pressed flowers, make a drawing inspired by them on one side of your bookmark. You might consider arranging them at a diagonal, like in Nosegay on a Marble Plinth, for more interest. 
You might also want to include little insects in your drawing. If you'd like, use colored pencils, markers, or crayons to color in your composition. Inspired by Rachel Roish, I have a dark background with light, vibrant flowers. If you plan to add a ribbon to your bookmark, be sure to leave some space for a hole in the top of your bookmark. If your flowers are from the Norton Simon Museum Art Kit, you can learn more about them in the content section underneath this video on the museum website. There, you will also find different poem forms to help shape your writing. On the other side of your bookmark, play with different ways of arranging your pressed flowers, looking to Roish's still life for inspiration on how to make your arrangement more exciting. When you are ready, glue your flowers to the bookmark. Remember to leave some space for a hole in the top of your bookmark if you'd like to add a ribbon later. If you are using self-laminating sheets, first peel the plastic off of one sheet. Then carefully place the sticky side of the sheet onto your bookmark so that it covers the entire bookmark. When you are ready, turn your bookmark over so the unlaminated side is on top. Then peel the plastic off of a second self-laminating sheet and stick it to your bookmark, again covering it entirely. If you are using clear packing tape, carefully cover one side of your bookmark with strips of tape. Then flip your bookmark to its other side and similarly cover it with tape. You will want to leave excess plastic around the edges, but still trim the borders so they are clean and even. If you wish to add a ribbon to your bookmark, use a hole puncher or a pair of scissors to cut a hole toward the top of your bookmark. Then, fold your ribbon in half and thread it through the hole. When you have pulled the ribbon halfway through the hole, stop and thread the bottom edges of your ribbon through the loop that was created when you folded it in half. Then, pull the edges of the ribbon through the loop to secure your ribbon to the bookmark. Thank you for taking time to look closely and make art with me today. I hope you enjoy using your bookmarks throughout the school year.